Hey everybody, um, welcome back to Ignorant Bliss, as my slow return to podcasting, or solo podcasting that is, and after last week's review of Magic Mike's Last Dance, I am back with a review for Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. It stars Paul Rudd, and eventually Lily, Michelle Pfeiffer, um, Michael Douglas, um, Jonathan Majors, and Catherine Newton. Um, taking place after the events of Endgame, wherever this may be during the current time frame of what is post Endgame and now. Um, so it could be a few months after, or probably maybe like a year, because it seems like, uh, um, some some time has taken place even more than we've seen, let's say, in Falcon and the Winter Soldier or WandaVision and, you know, the quick things. Uh, we have the Ant-Man family, as uh, I'll now call them, in San Francisco. Um, Scott Lang is basically retired. He has a book. He's just trying to spend time with his daughter as... Hope also has successfully got back her father's company and running it and being successful, being a great scientist. And um, Cassie, now 18, is a little bit rebellious, taking her her father's heroic uh, attitude and applying it to peaceful protesting against her trouble with the law uh, and his conflict between father and daughter on her basically being safe and informing him about things that's going on that Hank uh, and Hope knows and Janet and Scott does it. This leads to a machine that they were helping uh, Cassie with to study the quantum realm, which leads to the beginning of our adventure as they all get pulled into the quantum realm and split up. And the journey is to get home, but blocking and stopping that journey is the foe of the film, the supposed big bad of this multiversal arc of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Kang, as played by Jonathan Majors. And most of it is just dealing with Kang's want to escape from the quantum realm because he's trapped and using um Ant Man to help him get out of it. Say any more leads to spoilers. And I legit can't talk about spoilers. They literally embargo them until later in the month. Um I'ma get right to it. The movie didn't work for me. And some of you might have seen different critics go out and forth. Uh some probably battling some, even when they're positive, talk about this current entry as a fulfilling chapter versus a fulfilling film and movie all of, it, of itself. Uh, it didn't feel that fulfilling, even though um, Paul Rudd, I enjoyed it's hard for me not to like Paul Rudd. He's very likable. He's affable. He's a good guy. I'm used to him in this role. Um, I think that's why Ant Man is successful as it is, is because of Paul Rudd, his likability, and how he plays Scott Lang. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer is good as Janet Van Van Dyne, the classic wasp. Uh, she's she brings some good pathos to it. Uh, she's working with not having enough. Uh, and Jonathan Majors is Kang, who's also working with not having enough of putting so much into it that he adds on to it and adds enough there so you can get a character. Um, there, The pacing of this film feels very off. It felt very slow. And it felt very meandering in parts. Um, now, some may listen to this. It's like, he doesn't know what you talk about. Yo, I read a lot of Avengers comics. I'm... I, I'm pretty, 
pretty well versed on the different versions of the smaller natures of the universe that they kind of collapse together into one thing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, there is some allusions to um, the miniature world that the Hulk has went to, where he has a whole love of his life and Jarella and everything. It's nice nice to that. Uh, there's feelings of the microverse um, from the Micronauts that, you know, they can't use the Micronauts other than the things they created. But in all the world they made for that, they can use. And also that time when we thought the Wasp was dead, but she was really shrunken down, which is where they took all this from. Uh, a lot of that's all mixed together to give a very Star Wars, modern, current TV Star Wars-esque world of um, a bunch of aliens and they're rebelling against this evil dictator empire, which is Kang, uh, and his robot forces. Um, yes, there's also MODOK. I do not consider that a spoiler as people have found him in the trailers. Um, I'm not a fan of the way MODOK looks. I'm not a fan of most of the effects in this film. Uh, I do not think I am in the majority. Uh, I think there are times in which you get glimpses of creativity and brightness. And there's other times where things really feel flat and boring and flat in terms of it feels very generic. Um, with, yeah, I can't, there's, there's, there's not a lot for me there. The, 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 the look of the film is very dark and um, it's usually there's kind of a flatness to sometimes to the look of Marvel Cinematic Films, but this one actually has skated into what they criticize DC EU films for, for being dark. This one, I, I felt like this was dark. I felt like I was watching this movie with the 3D glasses on. It usually always makes things look a little bit darker than it should, uh, but I wasn't. Um, I do think that some of the technology or the space in which Kang rules could be a little bit more creative and less generic looking. Uh, I'll keep it a buck. To me, MODOK looked like an N64 character, upscaled, kind of like how the, the, the Golden Knight game has recently been upscaled for Xbox Series X and the like. It felt like that. Uh, it didn't work for me at all. Um, it almost feels like it wasn't or thought out. Um, Cassie was a bit different here and she comes across as like the plucky uh, teenager that's a, really a sidekick because she's you know uh, she's able to do some things but she doesn't get it all together she's the most younger Avenger feeling of all these younger Avenger character introductions we've seen um, cause there's a certain way when you're watching Hawkeye that, that, uh, young Hawkeye actually already knows a lot about shooting arrows and getting into scraps. Uh, Cassie got a lot to learn. Some of the aliens were pretty cool. I really like Katie O'Brien as Jatora. Um, she looked very strong, she looked powerful. She's now been added to my possible big barter list. Um, but the movie kind of, it doesn't rush, but it moves from point A to point B to point C in a way that feels like a television show or multiple episodes of a Disney Plus show that we've seen them make before. Uh, so I think it fits in probably really well if you're watching things in order that way. Uh, but watching it as a movie, it feels very lacking and it's not that quote unquote, it feels like a comic book because no, it doesn't feel like a comic book and the Marvel Cinematic Universe's structure. Um, wow. And I've been guilty of this, of calling this, this is like superhero comic book storytelling structure. We've gotten far enough that it really isn't, it's this own thing of turning uh, movie releases into a television style setup, but now since they have TV shows as well, it's morphed into something else that actually I don't think is good for entertainment, but that's really editorializing and something in another direction. 
but it doesn't feel completely like a superhero comic. This doesn't feel like uh, if some people want to say that the movie is the event book. No, this there is no giant Ant Man event. This doesn't even feel like a fully solid Ant Man four to six issue arc. Um, it really there's not enough there, and it it causes Kang, or at least it causes Kang to be lacking in certain regards on wanting to build him up as this grander threat. Now, while he looks powerful, there's some things that happen that like that you know that there's not enough going on and they're not explaining enough. And they're taking some shortcuts on some you're going to want to know more. So you're going to watch this whatever TV show or this next movie to build up that they actually really didn't do in the first two phases to build up to Thanos's on screen. Not even on screen, like him as an active character in Infinity War. Um, no, this doesn't feel like the TV shows are, are comic book issues and and in the movies is this or if you want to say it's like a comic book, the events is the Avengers films, which is why they're at the end. Um, you could probably say that each movie is half of a six or four ish, a six issue or eight issue event. And one movie is four issues or three issues and the other one is three to four issues with some stuff in in between thanks to other shows and other movies that lead into like the tie-ins but all this right now feels like this weird uh storytelling style that's not completely working and this is how they're starting off this phase so we'll see this is only the first part as we have a tv show and another movie to go within the next two and a half months uh, I I kind of give this movie a D. Um, I really, really didn't enjoy my time watching it. I could have skipped it. Um, the beginning and the ends were my favorite parts. It was just Scott at living life, but I had to deal with all this other adventuring stuff. Uh, nobody's really deep enough in this movie. The aliens are okay. Some of them are just winks and nods to characters you might know or you might not. And I got to give them credit, though. They went full born Kang's outfit. It's Kang Kang. It's real. It's, it's classic Kang costume all the way. Blue face, lines on the face and all. Um, that was nice to see because it's probably one of the most accurate outfits they've made. But overall... Uh, this ain't it, champ. Uh, but hey, people can go see this anyway. Not really gonna care much about what I have to say. Um, for those who care, you can follow me online at Julian Lytle, L-Y-T-L-E. Thank you for the few Patreons that I have, that I still have. Uh, I'm also on Geek Girl Right on Adobe Radio as an occasional co-host. Um, another show I have, I'm a co-host on is Culture Trapping uh, with Daryl Taylor, Sean Pryor, and Gil Colon. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to send the hate, send it my way. I am a tomato certified critic, so I'm going to add my my score to the the numbers. It probably won't change much on how people are going to go see it. Uh, if you enjoy it, I'm happy for you. I wish I could have. With that, peace. Scott, you have a chance to be the hero and earn that look in your daughter's eyes. When he came back, everything changed. The doorway to the quantum realm has opened. You may be an Avenger, but the hell is your league, Ant-Man?